Hello and good morning friends, welcome to the CEC Edisette live lecture. Dear friends, we are delighted to tell you that from today onwards we are going to start a very new series and the series is on intellectual property. Uh, because this is the first lecture in the series and I would like to tell you all that it is an introductory lecture on intellectual property and the topic itself says introduction to intellectual property and its relevance in today's world. So dear friends, before starting this lecture, I would like to tell you all for uh, delivery on this particular topic uh, today we have with us in our studios uh, Mr. Ashwani Sewal. He is an assistant professor in intellectual property and data security laws uh, in faculty of law University of Delhi as well as I would like to tell you all that uh, he is teaching um, since uh, 2010 and uh, he has written various um, articles uh, published in various national and international journals. So uh, let's take advantages from his experiences and uh, let's welcome our guest Mr. Ashwani Sewal uh, as well as uh, before starting uh, with this lecture I would uh, like to ask uh, Mr. Ashwani Sewal that um, what are we going to cover in this um, uh, particular series before starting with the intellectual property before uh, trying to understand what intellectual property is. So welcome to the Edisit lecture sir. Thank you Gitika. So um, as uh, you know yourself that uh, we are starting with this new series on uh, intellectual property and it is an introductory lecture uh, what we have the entire content for uh, this particular series uh, what we are going to cover in the future sessions thank you thank you Gitika. Uh, uh, welcome uh, viewers see uh, this uh, lecture series would uh, be basically on certain uh, intellectual property or the kinds of intellectual property so wherein uh, we'll be covering several things in our later meetings or in the ensuing time Certain things that I'll be covering in the very beginning today will, uh, after the introduction to the curriculum or the course, we'll go to the first introductory lecture on the intellectual property. But before that, I would like to introduce the viewers with the entire curriculum. What all we'll be covering? The first thing that will gonna happen today is the conceptual basis of intellectual property. During the conceptual basis of the intellectual property. We will be seeing the meaning, definition of intellectual property, object of intellectual property, need for the intellectual property, the necessity for the intellectual property, nature of intellectual property. We will see the rationale for intellectual property, the relevant legislations in India, important treaties and conventions, and the historical evolution of intellectual property, not only in India rather worldwide uh, evolution of the intellectual property say it's US, UK, European Union will cover all the uh, aspects of its evolution in today's lecture. But uh, for the whole series introduction the next thing that we're gonna do is the look we'll have to the kinds of intellectual property with examples. There are several kinds of intellectual property I'll be introducing the viewers with different kinds of intellectual property exhaustively in the later lectures, but uh, a small glimpse to the various kinds of intellectual property are given here. Patents, trademarks, copyright, related rights, GIs, geographical indications, industrial designs, protection of new varieties of plants. These are the various kinds that will be taking up exhaustively along with the case studies along with the nuances of these various kinds of intellectual property, their subject matter, their uh, procedure, protection procedure, their enforcement part, the civil and criminal remedies, everything will gonna take up uh, in the ensuing lectures. The next step would be to see one by one all these intellectual properties. When it comes to the patents, we'll see the subject matter for the patent, the procedure for obtaining the patent protection the enforcement part, the infringement, how does the infringement of the patent takes place. When one gets the patent, he uses it, exploits it for the benefit of himself and for the masses. But uh, if it gets infringed by somebody, then in that case we need uh, the protection. And the protection is being thrown by the state and the state takes care. The state machinery remains at the disposal to provide the protection to facilitate the enforcement of the patents. We'll have a case study on the patents. Exceptions of the infringement we'll see. 
will uh, look after that. Then in the next part of this lecture series, the next IP we will start, that is copyright and related rights. So, in the copyright too, we have a different subject matter. For the copyright, we will see what all can be brought under the gamut of its protection. We will see the infringement of the copyright, how does it take place, in what manners it can be done, who all can be the prospective infringers, who all can be the potential owners of the copyright, who all can have it, possess it, exploit it for the benefit of themselves and the masses, the public I mean. Exceptions to the infringement will look after. And in the end, we'll certainly gonna see certain case studies, the recent off late case studies of India, in India and across the world. Then uh, in the next part of our lecture series, the next IP we'll deal with is the trademarks. See viewers, I'll be deciphering or de you know, uh, telling you all about these intellectual properties, their definitions later on in the later lectures, in the ensuing lectures. But it, as it is introductory, we'll have to understand this, this, this trademark also, you know, has a great value and a potential to be utilized by the people, by the vendors, by the shopkeepers, by small thelawalas, by people out there, in, ma in many facets and manners, in many manifestations. So the subject matter for the trademark we'll look after in our lecture series. The infringement part of the trademark again, its exceptions, the case study, the procedure for obtaining the trademark protection, the various uh, treaties or the conventions are dealing with the trademark, the national, international treaties will look after, we'll see in the later lectures. And when it comes to the geographical indications, geographical indication again is very important IP, is a kind of IP. Its subject matter is need to be or required to be studied and understood by the viewers, by the people interested in owning the GI. Its subject matter, its conditions for obtaining the requirements actually for the obtainment of the GI are to be understood. Procedure for obtaining the GI, infringement remedies and penalties, the case study for the same. Industrial design, the next uh, thing that we'll uh, be taking in our lecture series or we'll be discussing very exhaustively as design has got a lot of relevance in today's world. Everyone gets bewitched with the new designs coming. Nobody, you know, buys a thing if, if he or she does not get uh, attracted or bewitched with the design. So it's all about the appeal that one product gives to you when you, you know, get uh, attracted towards it and you're going to buy that product. So importance of the design, the need for the protection of the design, the subject matter for the design, the qualifications for the design protection, the procedure for obtaining the design. These are the several things we'll be seeing under the module uh, called design module that we'll be having in our ensuing lectures. The last thing in our lecture series would be the plant variety protection. Or you can say the farmer's rights, breeder's rights, the subject matter for the plant variety, under the plant variety, the procedure for obtaining, what all cannot be given a plant variety protection, and the case study, the registration procedure. These are the several things that we'll be looking after. So let's get started with the very first thing uh, for today's uh, discussion, that is intellectual property. The meaning, the definitional part I'm gonna take up. Intellectual property is the offshoot of your intellectual. As the name suggests, intellectual property is the creation of your mind, something which comes by the application of the mind, something that, that uh, you know you create uh, with the application of your mind, something which is a result of thought or intellectual activity, offshoot of intellect. There can be several things. It's not only you know one thing that you create or say you, you uh, uh, come, up, come out with your uh, application of your mind, your judgment. There can be several things. The several examples I'll be giving to the viewers and then uh, I would try to put those examples in different kinds of the intellectual property. As we have seen in the introductory part that uh, there are patents, there are copyrights, there are trademarks, there are designs. So several creations are there which can easily fall, come under the ambit of these various 
kinds of intellectual property such as writing. See, whatever you write, whatever you write, nonetheless, it's literary merit, notwithstanding its literary merit. It's your copyrightable thing and it's your intellectual property. Whatever you create in the form of art, in the form of painting, in the form of music, or say a cine film made by a person, or a lyrics written by a lyricist, a composition drawn by a composer, can easily be given a intellectual property protection. It's matter of identifying what intellectual property protection can be granted and given to a person for that particular work. So first of all, you have to understand that uh, whatever work you create, notwithstanding its literary or its artistic merit, as far as the copyrights are concerned, can be granted a copyright if it falls squarely under the definition of for the subject matter of the copyright. But you will have to understand that it has to be original, it has to fulfill or qualify the conditions for fetching the copyright protection. Another example to understand the definition of the intellectual property. We have a uh, lot of inventions taking place with the advent of new technologies, with the usage of internet, information communication technology. Lot of literature is flowing and prevailing on the internet, in, on the cyber space. We get to see lot of stuff, pictures posted by people out there, literature written by people, or inventions done by the scientists in the form of drugs, pharmaceuticals, or say other kind of inventions to make the life easier of the people, to facilitate people to live the life comfortably. All, are all what? Are all creations of the mind. So these creations, if can be brought under the definition of the subject matter, subject matters are defined separately in the separate laws for the intellectual property with the separate kinds respectively. If the intellectual property or the work created by the person falls under any of the definitions of the subject matter or under the, under the subject matter of any of the IP, that can be easily granted or can be given a copyright or a patent or a design protection or intellectual property protection. But for that, you'll have to understand that your work, your creation, your creativity is what is new, is a contribution and is a thing which falls under the definition. Then you can easily have a copyright, patent, design protection. I mean intellectual property protection. Then we have other things also that can easily be called examples of intellectual properties. We have chemical formula, computer programs are copyrightable, images, logos, designs. See, there are several things which are copyright, copyrightable, which are given, which can be given intellectual property protection. The performance of a person can be given a copyright protection. A, 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 a juggler performs before the audience. A magician performs before the audience. A actor performs, performs before the audience. He can have a protection over his performance so that others cannot misappropriate it, cannot make false or a wrong use, illegal use of it. A person can have a protection on the music. Whatever music composition uh, is created by a person is what? Is a creativity. It, it requires skill. It requires judgment. It requires your application of the mind. Can be given a protection. Another example to be given to the viewers to make it easy for them to understand the intellectual properties in a simplicity manner. You see, we, we, we get to see a lot of things in a normal course of life. We go to the market, we, we want to purchase 
a pair of shoes. Why do we always look at the brand? What, what promise does it give to you? Why do we always go to a shop which is known? We go to buy a sweet to a sweet shop. We go to the Vikaner, we go to Haldiram. We always get attracted or say, always being driven by these brands, these names. These are the indications. Indications to tell the viewers, to tell the person, to the consumer, I mean, that the particular product, the particular thing is manufactured under the ages of this and that organization, under the ages of this and that entity. And that assures you the quality, assures you the value of that particular thing. That is how we, you know, get attracted and buy the things in the marketplace. All these, you know, logos, names, brands are what? Are the trademarks of the several people owned by them. If you want to use it, you cannot without their authorization. If you are doing it unauthorizedly, that will gonna be a infringement and you may be instituted for an infringement action. Or some other kind of a remedy can also be sought by the owner of the property through the court of law. Similarly, we have different uh, trademarks for services. In the case of the services, we see a lot of trademarks. These are called service marks actually. For example, hotel chains are there, restaurants are there. They are rendering services, hospitality services, food stuff they provide in their restaurants, right? The service to cater the foods to the people are all what are the examples of the trademarks which are for services, service trademarks I mean. Coming to design, example of a design for the intellectual property. See, one, one, one can easily see when one buys a product that he or she always buys a product which attracts the attention of the person, which appeals to his or him, his eye, which appeals to his requirement. Otherwise, you don't go to buy the thing. So, under the design, several things are protectable. The shape, the configuration, it can be two-dimensional, it can be three-dimensional, can be given a design protection. And the term for different IPs are there. See, the once you obtain the protection, it remains with the person for the stipulated term. During that stipulated term, the owner, the possessor of the property, one who has obtained the intellectual property protection on that, will be having the protection or will be utilizing it, exploiting it during that stipulated term. So I hope that the viewers have understood. In a nutshell, I would like to repeat it again. Intellectual properties are the creations of the mind of the people. Some things, processes, works, processes, products, literary work, artistic work, cinefilms, paintings, drawings, sculptures, designs, these are the examples, these are the things that are called intellectual properties. But the requirement is that they should be the offshoot of your mind, must not be the stolen thing of somebody else's property, must not be stolen product. If it is a stolen one, then undoubtedly the real owner, the original owner may not gonna sue you for that. The definitions of the intellectual property are several, are given by different uh, authors, by, by, by different, uh, sorry, philosophers, thinkers in the legal literature. The normal definition that one can see that intellectual property rights are generic terms of exclusive rights given to the results gained by humans, original intellectual activities and to the intellectual property signs used for business activities. They signify the intangible rights that own economic values. 
So see, when you get the intellectual property right, you get an exclusive right over your creativity. The another important definition given under article 2 of the World Intellectual Property Organization. Let me tell the viewers that WIPO, World Intellectual Property Organization is a central organization for the protection of intellectual property laws and the expert organization of the United Nations. The definition given under this article of the WIPO is, it reads, intellectual property shall include the rights relating to literary, artistic and scientific works, inventions in all fields of human endeavor, scientific discoveries, industrial designs, trademarks, service marks and commercial names and designations, protection against unfair competition and all other rights resulting from intellectual activity in this industrial, scientific, literary or artistic fields. See viewers, if you see this definition, there are a lot of things given explicitly under the purview of this definition, literary work, scientific work, products, processes, discoveries, designations, industrial designs. See this definition is inclusive. It is not an exhaustive definition. There can be many things which can easily be brought under this definition. New things can emerge, new manifestations of intellectual property can emerge tomorrow, can be easily brought under this definition. The another important definition given under the most comprehensive treaty, the international instrument under the most comprehensive convention on the IAP, intellectual properties, that is TRIPS definition. It says the term intellectual property refers to all categories of intellectual property that are subject of the following sections of the part 2 of the TRIPS. As I told to the viewers, the TRIPS is the most comprehensive treaty on the intellectual property. With the TRIPS, we have a good enforcement procedure of the intellectual property infringement, not only in India, rather in many nations which are signatory members of the TRIPS. We will have a exhaustive talk on the TRIPS in the later lectures, but the definition given of under the TRIPS of the intellectual property is as follows. It, it uh, recognizes eight kinds of intellectual property in this definition. Eight kinds of intellectual properties are types or say kinds of intellectual property are recognized. And the promise of the TRIPS is that all member nations, all signatory nations have to abide, have to bring certain amendments into their domestic legislations to become compliant to TRIPS or to come into the consonance of the basic tenets of the TRIPS. So these eight kinds given under the definition of the TRIPS of intellectual property are almost recognized in all member nations. And all member nations in compliance of the TRIPS are having domestic legislations. They had the domestic legislations earlier, so, earlier also, but uh, with the inception of the TRIPS, they had to made certain changes into their respective definitions and they accordingly did it. And some nations are still in the process of doing it. But these eight kinds of intellectual property, patents, copyright, trademark, design, geographical indications, integrated circuits and plant variety protection are recognized by the TRIPS and are equally in the similar fashion recognized by the member nations. In the next definition given under the Paris Convention for the Protection of Intellectual Property. Viewers, this uh, Paris Convention for the Protection of Industrial Property, Intellectual Property is of 1883 is quite older vis-a-vis -vis to the TRIPS because TRIPS came into 1994. But this definition of the Paris Convention is equally important because it also recognized several in industrial properties. 
patents, utility models, industrial designs, trademarks, service marks, trade names, indication of source or appellations of origin and the repression of unfair competition. See what I want to say and convey that in the definition of the intellectual property, apart from defining it literally that it is a creation of one's mind or it is just a offshoot of one's intellect. These definitions are providing us several kinds also, patent, copyright, trademark, these are the kinds recognized by the TRIPS, by the Paris Convention, by the WIPO treaty or say uh, uh, WIPO definition given under the earlier slide. The next thing that one must uh, understand and you must be having this question in your mind as to why we require this intellectual property, what is the need of having it, the necessity for having it. Viewers, intellectual property is required, the way you require other properties, you own a house, you own a car, you own several other properties, those properties that you own in a normal work of life are tangible properties, can be easily perceived and seen by the naked eye of the person. But uh, intellectual property, unlike normal property, is what? Is intangible, that cannot be perceived by the senses and cannot be seen, but one can easily own it. That is why we require a regime on intellectual property, we require to have intellectual property rights. If we are denied with these rights, then the misappropriation of this same property will take place very rampantly and that may lead to the chaos in the society. So for the better uh, order in the society, we need a right over the intangible assets. The another reason as to why we have intellectual property rights, viewers it strikes a balance between the private right on the one hand and the public right on the other. When the person is awarded one intellectual property, say a patent protection he or she gets, he uses it, exploits it for uh, stipulated term. In the case of the patents, the term stipulated by the Patents Act 1970 is 70, is 20 years, sorry, it's, it's 20 years after the obtainment of the patent, after the grant of the patent protection. So for those 20 years, the person owning that patent would be using it, utilizing it and minting money out of it as it is his private right to do that. It is his personal right to do that. In our constitution, in the Indian constitution, we have a promise from the constitution to have a property, to own a property. Though it is not a fundamental right, but it is a constitutional right of a person. Similarly, you see, in the case of the intangible assets, in the case of intangible properties, that is intellectual property, one can easily own it, one can easily have it, one private person can enjoy it. That is how, you know, one easily make use of his property. Another part when we talk about this balance to be created or when I say that uh, intellectual property rights strikes a balance between the private right on the one hand and the public right on the other. See, the intellectual property right given to a person in the form of a patent is a limited right. It is temporospatial right, limited in terms of time, limited in terms of space. It remains with the person for the stipulated term. In the case of the patent, it is 20 years. But after those 20 years, it falls under the public domain. And the public make use of it. The public utilizes it without the authorization, can you authorize it, they are allowed, it is a legitimate use done by the public because the inventor, the owner of the property has already used it for 20 years, the stipulated term period to be enjoyed by him. But after that it has to come to the public domain. So in a way you can say that private rights and public rights are being balanced because of the intellectual property regime. The another thing. Another importance of the intellectual property that it has got a economic significance. Nowadays, our uh, age is of information, 
is of knowledge and economy is based on the knowledge. Economy is based on inventions, on different technologies and it has been the constant endeavor of the human being to make the life comfortable, smooth by bringing into by bringing new technologies, by bringing new mechanisms. See, economic significance, when, when we talk about the economic significance, one entity, one organization, if owning a intellectual property, always have a edge over the other organizations. I mean the organization which does not own a intellectual property. These intellectual properties are very lucrative, especially patents are very lucrative. It has got a lot of business value, lot of money is involved, one can milk plenty of money because of the owning of the intellectual property. So its economic significance is not debatable at all, not disputable at all. It has got lot of potential and it can be exploited in several manners and mechanisms to make money, to you know get edge over other entities, to make the company or the organization, the entity pioneer in its field. The another reason to have intellectual property that it serves variety of industries. It serves lot of industries. It serves information industry by the production and distribution of books and magazines. It serves entertainment industry, television and broadcasting. It serves manufacturing industry, industrial designs. It serves pharmaceutical sector. So there are several things that can easily be brought under this ambit. Many, many organizations can be named of the similar sort or in the similar lining using, having, possessing, owning intellectual properties. That is the need, the necessity as far as the you know need or the necessity of intellectual property is concerned. In our ensuing or later lectures, we will have a good insight, the elaborate insight, the exhaustive insight on its need and its necessity. The next question that must come to the mind of the viewers, why intellectual property matters? Why? Why do you want to own a property? When you own a plot of a, 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 a small land holding, it's your property, you own it and you feel good when you own it. You have something in your hand at your disposal. You own other things, other properties, cars, you know, gold, jewelry, lot of things you own. But those are tangible assets that you own can easily be watched by others. When it comes to intangible assets in the form of intellectual property, they are equally important. The first importance as I mentioned uh, earlier also that the intellectual property is a very lucrative property. It fetches you a lot of money, it fetches you recognition, fame. It is a key business asset. One business entity owning an intellectual property as I mentioned earlier can have easy edge over the other entities working in the same area in the same field because it has good IP value and the valuation can easily be done by the process of IP management by the auditing of the IP in the research and in, uh, in, in the development unit in the corporation in the organization in the respective field. IP is used for uh, marketing goods and services in the form of the trademark. You want to market your goods what would you do th for that? You will have to give it a indication, give it a name. It can be any name given by you, derived by you, irrespective of its appeal or its, you know, uh, value. It can easily become your trademark. But undoubtedly, you will have to give an indication to market your goods so that people out there, the consumers I mean in the marketplace can identify your products, can identify your services, can identify value associated with your products, their quality. The next argument or say the next uh, uh, 
uh, thing that I would like to tell to the viewers as to why intellectual property matters, that it spurs economy. It spurs economy. It does not stifle the economy. It spurs the economy. Though there is a different line of argument from the philosophers, from the people uh, in the legal field, that uh, it stifles the economy, it does not add such a spurs the economy. But my personal view is that, that the IPR regime and intellectual property as such, the property, it spurs the economy, it, it, it you know, facilitates the economy, it gives it a boost, it does not hamper it and obstruct it. It incentivizes the creator, that is the most important aspect viewers. Intellectual property incentivizes the inventor. See, what if you do not get any recognition after creating something? What if you do not have, you know, fame associated with your work? What if you do not get money? Or say, you get a money, one time money in the form of peanuts to be given to you for your work. You will not feel happy. You will not be, you know, satisfied with your work and you will not get incentivized to remain involved and grows in the same work for the future. So, intellectual property as such incentivizes the creator by giving him the reward, by granting him the property protection first of all and then the economic exploitation of his or her work. For example, in the case of the patents, I would like to give you example to make you understand it easily. Patented drugs are there. The scientists are involved in the research and development of these drugs. They work tirelessly day and night for the creation of one simple formula that would undoubtedly be a remedy or a cure to the malady of somebody, to the illness of somebody, to the ailment of somebody. But the inventor, the creator, requires something else also, so that he gets boost or he gets uh, some sort of excitement to work for, to work with on that same project or say for other future endeavors. That is why intellectual property is necessary. He has to be given uh, incentive in the form of IP protection, the grant, the, the recognition and then the economic exploitation of the same later on. And the recognition part is always liked by everybody that uh, one is being recognized because of his or her work. We had in our history many Hakims and Vads. They were known because of their uh, respective specializations, because of their uh, respective works that they did for the humanity. Though we did not used to have the intellectual property regime at that point of a time. And that is the main reason that we lost their work. We do not have in our repository that work available with us. Had there been an intellectual property regime at that point of a time, we would have certainly that work available with us for our disposal, for the betterment of the humanity, for the upliftment of the humanity. They used to work for only for the cure and for the welfare of the society, at last for the fame and the recognition. So, what I mean to say is that the recognition is the indispensable thing, the fame everyone needs and he or she works because he is promised by the state that certainly he will gonna get some form of recognition, either recognition in the form of the grant or his popularity or his uh, economic exploitation with the same. That is why it matters. Then there comes next thing, it is a rationale for intellectual property. It is quite uh, ticklish to make the viewers understand the rationale of the intellectual property, because the rationale is not that easy or the logic behind the regime is not that easy to understand, to comprehend. There are divergent views available as far as the rationale 
behind these rights are concerned. Out of those divergent views, I would like my viewers to have a look on some views which I certainly concede and approve that is pro IPR views that uh, it is a first of all a natural right of a person to own a property protection, to own a right over his or her work, it is a natural right, it is called natural rights rationale of a person. According to this rationale, whatever you create, whatever you own is your right or over that you have a right, it is your natural right, nobody else without your permission, without your authorization can impinge, penetrate on that, can violate it, infringe it. This natural right theory is a very popular theory. We will see the salient features of this rationale in the next slide. We have another rationale available that is moral rationale for the IPRs, intellectual property rights, moral rationale. That is the immoral thing to steal somebody's work. Viewers, it was even written in the 10 commandments that those shall not steal that you shall not steal others work. So, it is a moral rationale behind the IPR that uh, one can have a protection, one can own a property in the form of intellectual property and others, the unauthorized persons are not allowed, not permitted to infringe, to penetrate into their work. Then there is economic incentive rationale. According to this economic incentive rationale, one gets incentivized, one gets uh, motivated to work when he or she is given a protection. A patent protection one gets, he works harder to come up with another kind of a work, a product or a process so that he can fetch another patent protection. Similarly, one works to create other forms of intellectual property because he and he or she knows that he will certainly be given some sort of incentive by the government in the form of a grant of that particular property protection or uh, in the form of economic exploitation of it or you can say for the recognition. The another rationale for uh, having the IPR or this uh, intellectual property as such that it increases competition. The more the competition in the market, the more it would benefit the consumers and when one knows that he or she will get the intellectual property if he remains constantly working in one endeavor, certainly it will gonna increase the competition. People will strive more and more, will strive really very hard to get the protection and as a corollary it will benefit the consumers in the marketplace because they will have lot of things to buy, to compare and compare the differential rates available of the products or the processes. So, it increases competition and benefits the consumers. Let us have a uh, elaborate look, exhaustive look on the rationale for intellectual property. As I told that uh, it is my personal pro IP view that I am telling to the viewers, later on we will have a look on the anti IP view. As far as the pro IP view is concerned, as I mentioned that natural right rationale is there. You see, John Locke the propounder of the natural rights or propounder uh, of the social uh, contract theory argued for a natural rights theory. In this context, he said that ideas are protected under the principle of natural law in the sense that somebody's idea is a natural right. Then after him, another, uh, another legal uh, scholar, Jean Baptiste, 
who in the beginning of the 19th century wrote on the natural aspects of right, was a prolific advocate of perpetual patent protection. He believed that the IPR system provide the answer to protect human creativity and personality from unfair exploitation. He introduced the term mon autopoly, meaning monopoly of oneself. Basically, see this natural right rationale can be summarized by saying that in accordance with natural rights theory of the social contract, everyone has a permanent and inalienable natural right to the sole disposal of themselves and their work. See, as it rightly mentioned, inalienable natural right, a right which can never be snatched from that person as it is his or her natural right. This is one rationale which goes pro-IP regime or pro-IP intellectual property. The moral rationale, see in the moral rationale if you see the utilitarian philosopher Jeremy Bentham who wrote in the 18th century also distinct between normative theory and positive theory and he adamantly opposed the theory of natural rights. He introduced ethical principles or morals into property right theory. According to him, it is immoral to take away somebody's property without the authorization of that person. The idea of his theory is that, that it would be immoral if the law lets everybody free to use the work of an inventor without their consent and without compensation or equivalent in return. Let us talk a little bit about this theory because I find it very clinching to me personally. It is really immoral if you take away somebody's work without the permission of that person. When it comes to tangible property, tangible assets, say your uh, small land holding that you have, if somebody starts you know trespassing into that property, you will not allow that person. So is the case on the intellectual property, it is your intangible right. But if somebody without your permission, without your authorization immorally and uh, nowadays it is illegal also as we have several domestic legislations to tackle with the, that issue. Immorally tries to penetrate, immorally tries to infringe the property of that person. That would really be detrimental for the owner of the property and would be a dishonest misappropriation by the wrongdoer. So, immoral rationale is quite clinching to me. The next rationale is the economic incentive rationale. The several academic scholars are there who propounded that IPRs provide the prospect of reward. This in turn increases creative and technological advance by provi providing increased incentives to invent, invest in and further develop new ideas. I would like to highlight two things from this particular rationale. See, with the economic incentive, you have what? You have some promise to invest in some work. If there is no inventive, sorry, if there is no incentive, certainly you do not have any promise or assurance to invest in any work because you know you will not get anything at the end of the day. But when you have a promise in the form of IPR induced incentives, I am calling it IPR induced incentives. These intensives, incentives are what? IPR induced. We are given certain IPRs, intellectual properties and the right over different works. They facilitate the person to invest more and more, to invest time, energy, money, in the creation of the work and that is how the public gets benefited at the end of the day because when the researchers, the inventors, the creators will remain involved, engaged, engrossed in the making, in the creation of new things, new technologies, the masses will get benefited because they will have new technologies for their disposal, for their upliftment, for their betterment. As for example, we have cellular phones, we all use it very frequently nowadays, everyone owns it. We have smartphones culture now. 
many things in these technologies are intellectual property protected. When we use, we do not care as to who owns that property, but viewers mind it, somebody is owning it certainly, is having a property protection on that. You have purchased that particular product and you have paid the amount that is why you are using it. But the moment you start using it beyond the stipulated use, the owner will gonna certainly sue you. You cannot on your own, you know, start making cellular phones by imitating somebody else, the design of the cellular phone, its technology or the technology involved in the cellular phone. You will have to take the permission, you will have to buy the technology and only then you are allowed to use it. Then we have increased competition rationale as I already told, I can skip it that it increases the competition and benefits the consumer. Let us have a look at the entire IPR rationale. As I told in the very beginning before starting the rationale for the IPR that there are divergent views available on this issue. Some say that it is good, some say that it is bad. It is your choice on what point, on what lining you go or you pursue your uh, perception with. When it comes to entire IPR rationale, we have a lot of views of the different scholars available with us. Social origin of inventions, the very first view. According to this view, viewers, it is said that one particular invention is not a creation of one individual. It is a creation of the society, the whole society has remained involved in the creation of one work and that is why it is called that it is having a social origin, which I do not find very cogent and promising because as per this rationale, let me decipher it bit, every creation that we see today on surface has its background. Many people have researched in that area remained in, involved uh, in the research and development of that particular area, had worked tirelessly day and night for the creation. But at the end of the day, when it came to the surface, when the research got materialized, it was done by one individual or by one entity. So, he or she claims that he is the inventor or the creator of that work. This rationale is a complete contrast of his claim. It says no, it is not your creativity, it is having a social origin. Many people has remained engaged, engrossed in the research and development. So, it is not your work exclusively, it is the work of the society as a whole. But I really do not find any point in that. Whatever, that is my personal opinion, I do not impose it on the viewers. Then the next rationale when it comes to entire IPR is misvalued reward. Some scholars have argued, debated that when we grant intellectual property protection to a person, it is granted in the form of a reward which is misvalued or sometimes it remains undervalued. It is not proper, it is not, uh, you know, completely properly calculated reward given to a person and that may create a problem that, that, that you know may complicate the things. So, they have their uh, understanding that whatever reward we give in the form of the IPR induced incentives are misvalued. The another rationale, anti-IPR rationale is that inventive activity is inborn. People say that you will remain engaged in the research and development or in the in the creation of something because that is your inborn 
activity. I kind of agree that uh, every homo sapien has certain curiosity. If you see a small infant, even he or she, the infant does have the curiosity to know the world. It is inborn in him. But to say that coming up with an invention or a creativity is inborn is kind of not cogent, not proper. The next rationale when it comes to anti-IPR is the that IPRs are general, thrown generally to the people out there. And let us have a look on the last rationale that is IPR are general, it is argued that it is a problem that the IPR system is general and compensates and rewards equally all novel technological ideas, whether they are result of great effort or a side product of accidental inventive activity. Viewers, I would like to emphasize on this uh, or, or say kind of discussion I would like to open on this point that IPRs are general. What, is, what does this rationale mean? What does it say? It says that IPRs are general given to any accidental or incidental invention. And according to this rationale or this view, the philosophers, the scholars have said that IPRs are given to certain inventions which are accidental. And some scholars have gone to an extent saying that maximum inventions are accidental, come into four, four or to the surface as a serendipity which I really do not uh, find clinching and uh, promising because rarely it happens that something you know gets created out of serendipity or accidentally. It is the labor, the skill, the judgment of the person, the whole effort of the person that lies behind the actual making of the work finally. Thank you so very much for uh, giving us such a productive session. Dear friends, if you have uh, any queries or if you want to give your feedback regarding this particular lecture, you can mail us at info.cc at the rate nick.in and uh, we would be meeting you again tomorrow and would be discussing more on the intellectual properties. Thank you, sir. Thank you once again. Thank you.